Dear friends, I hope it works. It works. Uh, we have uh, come to the uh, uh, final part of the uh, 12th uh, Conference of the European Society um, of International Law. And uh, I uh, welcome those who are still <laughs> with us here. Um, before I give the floor to the President of the European Society, Professor Andrew Nonkemper, uh, there are a few people that I would like to specifically mention and that I hope we all can really very warmly applaud to all these people. First of all, uh, this is the program committee that made the contents of the conference the way you lived through them. And the members of the program committee were Professor Anvan Aken, Christina Binder, Hilary Charlesworth, Marie Futter, Lauri Malkso, Ellen Rui Favri, George Ulrich. I thank you very much, Programme Committee, for having helped us to put together this conference. <laughs> and you have seen um, uh, all of the people helping you during the uh, conference days. Uh, I would like to thank all of the volunteers of the Riga Graduate School of Law, University of Latvia, and the Ministry of Justice. These are all young lawyers, Latvian lawyers, who uh, guided you, helped you, and assisted in many different ways. They, some of them are in the back, and if we could really uh, applaud to all of them, thank you very much. If you could stand up, those who are still around, if you could stand up, and some are still outside. Um, and in particular, and in particular, if I, if I could mention a few names that you have already been new because you have been communicating. First of all, the uh, uh, director of the R RGSL, Karina Kulberga. Uh, secondly, our PR person, but someone who is in the heart of all this event, Laura Majewska, Elina Stungrevica, Justina Elferte, and Nathaniel Kuriel, as well as uh, from the Constitutional Court, Liga Paulina and Laila Jurzana. I don't know whether they are here, but please thank them all warmly. <laughs> and with these words, Andre, I'm very happy to give you back this place. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ineta. So, for the last time. Um, thank you. So, let me, by way of closing, make a couple of remarks and maybe start with one point of substance. So, like being dean, being a president of the European Society sort of has a danger of disconnecting you from the substance of what's going on. But nonetheless, I have been able to listen in, listen in, in many of the agora and fora. And for me, the final um, address by Judge Sauvé was very illuminating, because it drove home one point that I also picked up in much of the fora and agora. And that was the fact that while we are looking at individual crisis, migration, ISIL, financial instability. In the end, all of those crises are manifestations of structural features and problems and processes in international law. And it can be very defeating and overly reductionistic to look at these crises in isolation. And the fundamental problems and concepts of sovereignty, pluralism, cooperation that uh, Judge Souvet highlighted are key for understanding 
and where possible, solving these problems. Listening to the panels also brought home a sense of modesty of the international lawyer. Of course, the degree to which we find all of these problems to be crisis of international law depends very much on what we expect, of what we realistically can expect international law to do and international law to be. And perhaps inevitably, European society being anchored in Europe with all of its idealism tends to look at these problems of problems of international law. And that, in a way, international law fails to provide a solution. But very clearly, international law cannot possibly do this on its own. So that was another point that Judge Sauvé very well made, and that was brought home by some of the questions. That eventually, eventually, much of this is about not so much international law in isolation, but about the connection between law and governance, law and politics, and about the will, the political will, to use the existing law and to bend the existing law and to develop the existing law. So this is a very important to the society, that we view ourselves, and we can view ourselves, not to be only society about law in a narrow sense, but that we understand that we have to address these problems in this broader context of politics and governance. And I think the program in the ETA that he put together did this very, very well because we discussed all of these problems of law in their wider context. So that was my one point on substance. Uh, last year I did a, a couple of minutes on the three things I liked and the three things I did not like about the conference in Oslo. So I searched through these three days again for the three three, but I could not find really the three things I did not like. Uh, perhaps even if I would have thought some, I may not have said them here. So I'm not saying anything about this, but I will say three things that I did like very much, in addition to what I already said on the substance and the ability of the conference to portray and discuss law in this broader context. So what I really liked was the amount of new voices that we heard in this conference. There's always a risk in European society, as in any society, and perhaps even more in the American society, that every year you hear the same people on the podium. And in a way, that is also good because some people are simply extremely interesting and young, in particular young scholars, want to see these names. And we should definitely be doing that and perhaps even a bit more than we've done here. But this conference, much more than previous conferences, also brought on the podium people from regions a new voices that we have, had not seen in ESO events before. And that diversity and the ability at every new event to bring as speakers and participants a whole group of new voices, that is one of the amazing, fascinating uh, dimensions of the European society. That we are so large and we can be so large and so diverse. And this conference was hugely successful in, in widening and exposing the diversity of the membership of the society. So that's the one thing I like. The other thing, I said this many times, but I have want to say it again, is the quality of the organization. So due to the, all of the people who Inieta already thanked, um, it was really very um, smooth and faultless. And the lesson I take from this for the future is that there is strength in numbers. So having many, many people who are very committed at every place in the room, on the streets, on the way to the castle. That is one of the keys I've learned to a successful conference. So we definitely uh, are looking from now on to people in Naples who can do the same type <laughs> of thing. So the third thing I, I did like is the, um, is the context. So I think we cannot hide, we should not hide that one of the interesting aspects of being in European society and traveling throughout Europe is not just the substance, but also the fact that you come to different places. And being here made me realize that seeing the beautiful beauty of the city, uh, hearing this wonderful choir last night, being in the reception of the president, which definitely was a primer for the European society, I mean, that is part of the context. This helps us understand also how international law works, what the context is of international law in this state. So the, 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 one, the program 
you created beyond the conference was really, truly excellent and uh, wonderful, and we will definitely not forget this for many years. Now, the third point, um, and I think procedurally I have to do this here, um, f for those of you who were not in the dinner last night, uh, formally I have to announce the result of the elections also as the final event. Um, so I said last night at the dinner, and I will say again, that for me personally, and I have no doubt for many of you, making the choices between candidates was extremely, extremely difficult, if not impossible. But we are very happy with the result as it came out. The new candidates that as of today or yesterday, that's not entirely clear, but let's say today, are members of the board and they will set to their mission um, at two o'clock in the afternoon when the new board meets in a new composition, setting its targets for the next um, years for ESIL. The new members, the newly elected members, I should say, are Anna van Aken, Pierre Dajan, Veronica Bielkova, Maria Isieva, Luis Hingosa, Fulvio Palombino, and Filipa Webb. And let's congratulate them once more on their elections to the board. I also, should, I also should thank the election officers who counted the votes, Maria Dordesca, Letizia Rogazio, and Jet Oramat. I should say, at one point, at six o'clock, I became a bit afraid that something went wrong with the elections, because it took a long time, but I learned that they counted the votes like five times over, and there was simply a very huge number of votes. So this election committee did their task very, very exactly, and I did thank them again for their work. <laughs> My fourth point, and this is a footnote to something I said at dinner. So in the, in the dinner, I made a sort of semi-joke about the Young Scholars Prize. Um, so as I said yesterday, we had this wonderful book prize that was awarded, and I also said that the jury of the Young Scholars Prize concluded, after long deliberations, that the prize would not be awarded. Now, I would want to prevent the suggestion that from now on um, there would be no point in applying for the Young Scholar Prize. Far from it, far from it. Let me explain why we have this prize. We have an immense large number of young scholars who participate and who contribute to the Agora. And we have invited, and we will invite young scholars, to compete for this prize. Um, and the standard for that is very high, high. The idea is that a winning paper could be published in the European, Soci in the European Journal of International Law. So for young scholars, this is an immensely attractive proposition, because not many of us actually write in the European Journal. So the threshold is high. We are only now in the second year of the Young Scholar Prize, and my feeling is it really has to land in the society. This year, the number of applications was extremely low. Only three were considered. But I, in many panels, heard exciting, very strong papers by young scholars who apparently were not yet aware of this prize. So I have no doubt at all, I have no doubt at all that next year the prize will be awarded if the quality that we have seen here will be present again in Naples. So I definitely encourage all of you to contribute, propose and compete for that prize. I have much faith in the quality of the younger generations in ESO. Briefly, on the next steps, um, as explained yesterday, the three next steps for ESIL are Naples, no, Granada in spring 17, Naples in September 17, and Manchester in September 18. These are the three events which are now lined up. The location for the research forum in 2018 is yet to be determined. Between these events, there's a huge number of other events. I just named the cities where we are going for a fact or where we are considering to go in the next year alone. So this list contains The Hague, Luxembourg, Kiev, Moscow, Prague, Warsaw, Nottingham. These are facts. Then there are suggestions, which include Budapest, Ljubljana, Grenoble. Um, Skopje has been mentioned. The sky really is the limit. And what we can do eventually is only limited by what 
you are willing to do and propose, and eventually, of course, always also by the Secretariat. And I use this opportunity to thank again, I did so at the beginning, but I need to do so now again, to thank Joyce Davis for keeping really single-handedly this, all of this, all of these events afloat. And I can say for a fact that we would not be here in this shape without Joyce. So thank you again, Joyce Davis. And this brings me to my final thanks. Um, in addition to what I already thanked, thanking all of the people who contribute, my special thanks go again to Georg Ulrich, Rector of the Graduate School of Riga. Thank you very much for making this possible and supporting the event in this way. To Aldis Lavins, Chairman of the Constitutional Court of Latvia, thank you also very much for your wonderful support and the facilities that you brought to the conference. And finally, if Inieta is still here, but even if she's not here, I will thank her again. Inieta has been on the board from the very beginning. So Inieta was, has been on the board for a very, very long time, then briefly left and then came back to the board to organize this conference. And from my angle, what Inieta has done is to look for 10 years at all of the previous conferences, take from it what worked, and left aside what didn't work and brought all of that experience here in Riga to bring, to bring here this masterful conference that we will not light, lightly forget. So thank you again, Inieta, for everything you've done for society and for putting together this wonderful conference. With this, I close the conference. Thank you.